I'm going to walk through the process of installing a Linux virtual machine using VirtualBox. You can use VirtualBox in Windows, Mac, and Linux. I'm going to demonstrate how to install Debian as a guest operating system, but the process will be nearly identical for any distribution you choose. I'll cover the following topics. Installing VirtualBox on your host machine with the extension pack to enable disk encryption. Installing Debian in the virtual machine. Installing the VirtualBox guest additions to Debian to allow shared clipboard, shared folders, seamless mode, and desktop resizing. If you don't already have VirtualBox installed, go to https colon slash slash www.virtualbox.org and go to the downloads page. Download the version for your platform and install it. If you're in Windows, download the one that says Windows Hosts and just double click the exe. In Mac, choose the one labeled OSX Hosts, then install it like you normally would with the .dmg file. Now take a moment to install VirtualBox after downloading it. Also, scroll down a little and download the VirtualBox extension pack. This is only a single download for all platforms. I'll show you how to install this in a second. I also highly recommend scrolling down a little further and downloading the user manual and reviewing the FAQ. Browse through the user manual to get an idea of what features it has. It also has detailed installation instructions there if you need more details. So once you have VirtualBox itself installed, you can install the extension pack. When you download the VirtualBox extension pack from the downloads page, and you already have VirtualBox installed, you might have the option to run it directly or to save it. Running it directly is the easier option, but I'll demonstrate how to save it first. Then you simply double click on the extension file. VirtualBox should open it automatically. Otherwise, you can go to the VirtualBox main menu to preferences and then extensions, and you can manually add the extension file there. Installing this extension pack allows you to do full disk encryption on the virtual hard disks, along with other features like remote desktop to virtual machines and USB 3 support. These extensions are optional, but I recommend them at least for the full disk encryption, which can be very valuable. Now that we have VirtualBox ready to go, we can create a virtual machine. To create a new virtual machine, open VirtualBox, and you can either use the main menu or click on Tools, and then new. Follow the prompts and it'll ask you for a name. I'll call this one Danos Debian. I'll leave the directory as the default. For type, pick Linux and Debian 64 or find the closest match for your OS. Then it will ask you for how much RAM you want to give it. This will be up to you but if you can spare it, I recommend at least one to two gigabytes. Debian says Debian 10 Buster needs at least 550 megabytes. Next, it will ask you about your hard disk. Debian says version 10 release needs 850 megabytes of disk space. But if you install a desktop and a lot of apps, you'll really need at least six to eight realistically, six to eight gigabytes. It will grow dynamically if you use the VirtualBox automatically growing disk, so it doesn't hurt to be a little generous if you have the disk space to spare. Then we hit next and the virtual machine has been created and it will show up in the menu. Click on the machine in the menu and then open settings. There's usually a lot of settings you want to tweak before running it for the first time. Under the General tab, we can look through the Advanced tab and set the Snapshot folder if we want. I'll turn Shared Clipboard and Drag and Drop both to Bidirectional. This will allow copy and pasting between the host and the guest and dragging files and text between them too. The disk encryption will be available if you installed the VirtualBox extension pack. You can turn the encryption on and off even after the disk has been filled with data. Under the System tab, we can set up the motherboard and the CPU. 
I'm going to leave everything as default on the motherboard tab. Under processor, I'll choose the amount I want, somewhere in the green. I'll leave the other options as default. Under display, I'll set the video memory to max since I'm going to use a desktop. I'll stick with one monitor and keep it at VM SVGA and check on enable 3D acceleration. For remote display, I'll leave that off and recording, I'll leave that off too. Under storage, you can set up all the disks it has, hard disks, floppy disks, CDs, DVDs, it will have one virtual hard disk that we configured already. By default, it will have a CD-ROM drive or a DVD drive, but it won't have anything in it. Let's take this chance to put in the ISO for our Debian installer. Click on the CD icon that says empty, and then in the attributes area, click on the disk icon to select the disk. Then select choose a disk file and navigate to the ISO you want. I'll choose my Debian net install ISO. Then with the network tab, it deserves some special attention. Some of the primary options you'll choose is either NAT or a bridged adapter. With NAT, your guest OS will be able to reach out to the internet, but you won't be able to communicate between the host and the guest over IP. The rest of the network will also not see this guest. The guest will essentially be hidden within your host operating system if you use NAT. If you choose bridged adapter, then the guest will get its own IP on the network and it will look like any other physical machine that was connected to that network and anything will be able to talk to it. You can set up multiple network adapters if you want. There's also an option for NAT network. A NAT network is useful when you want to create several virtual machines and you want all of them to be able to talk to each other on a specific NAT network, but you don't want them bridged to have their own IPs on your main network. You can set up a NAT network by going to the VirtualBox Preferences, Network, and then add a NAT network. And then when you're configuring the specific virtual machines, you can configure them to use the specific NAT networks. Under the ports section of the settings, I usually don't have to mess with anything and I leave those as default. Under the shared folders tab, you can specify a folder on the host OS that you want to mount inside the guest. It's easiest when you turn on auto mount. Under the user interface tab, you can leave that all as default. Now that we have all of our settings configured and we virtually inserted the Debian disk into the drive, we're ready to start it up. Click on the virtual machine and press start. Then once it boots, it should boot from your ISO and launch you into the installer. Because this screen looks so small on my resolution, I'm going to scale the display up. In the status bar for the virtual machine, I will right click on the display icon and choose Virtual Screen 1, Scale to 200%. Since I inserted a Debian install disk, it will launch me into the Debian installer. If you're using a different distribution, it will have its own install method, but it will likely be very similar. Follow the steps for your distribution. For Debian, I'll simply follow the prompts in the wizard and let it run. I'll choose the regular install and not the graphical install. If you chose to use full disk encryption with VirtualBox, it will prompt you for the disk password now. I'll choose English as the language, United States for location, American English for my keyboard layout. Then it will do a little setup that may take a moment. Then I'll set the host name and the domain name. I'm just leaving these as the default for now, but you may choose to modify the host name. 
When it asks you for the root user's password, there's one important thing to know. If you provide a root password, then your regular user will not have sudo privileges by default. However, if you leave the root password blank, then the root user will be disabled and your regular user will have sudo privileges. I'll choose to leave the root password blank and stick to the user account. So then I'll fill out my name, username, and password. Then I'll pick a time zone. Then it will ask about disk partitioning. This can be tricky in a lot of cases if you're installing on a physical machine, but since we're on a virtual machine and we have this virtual hard disk, we can simply choose guided use entire disk and then put all the files in one partition and then write the changes to the disk. At this point, it will start installing the base system, and this may take several minutes. When it's done, it will ask you if you have any more disks to scan. If you're using the net install disk, you won't have any other disks. Then I'll tell it to use United States Mirror for packages. I don't have any proxy, so I'll leave that blank. And then it will scan the repositories for updates. It'll then ask if you want to participate in the package survey, and I'll choose no for this one. Then it will ask what packages to install. I want to install a lightweight desktop, so I'm going to uncheck the default desktop environment and check the LXQt desktop using the spacebar. Then I'll press enter, and it will still install all the chosen packages. You can choose not to install any desktop environment if you want and just get the base system. This install will take several minutes. When it's done installing the packages, it will ask you if you want to install the grub bootloader on the master boot record of the hard disk. Choose yes, and then choose the VBox virtual hard disk. When that's done, if it doesn't automatically eject the disk, you can remove it by going to the virtual box menu for devices, optical drives, and then choose remove optical drive. Then you can restart the machine and you're ready to go. Now that Debian's installed, if I try resizing the VirtualBox window, you'll notice that Debian doesn't respond. We can fix this by installing the VirtualBox guest additions into our Debian guest. While the virtual machine is running, we can go to the VirtualBox menu for Devices, Insert Guest Editions CD Image. This is the equivalent of inserting a CD into the computer. If you're in a desktop environment, it might automatically pop up and open the folder for you, or put an icon on your desktop for the disk. Otherwise, you might need to open the terminal and use the mount command to figure out where the disk is mounted. In my case, it looks like it mounted on slash media slash CD-ROM zero. I'll switch to the root user by running sudo su dash. I'll use the terminal to navigate to slash media slash cd-rom zero and list the files. The file we want is called vbox linux editions dot run. Before we run this though, we need to install some build tools and the header files for the Linux kernel so that the guest editions can compile the kernel module. Do this with apt install build essential and linux headers uname-r, which is going to specify the kernel version that we're running. Then in the terminal we can run bash vbox linux editions dot run and this will compile the kernel module and set everything up.
When that's done, reboot the guest machine. And when we're back in the desktop after rebooting, we should be able to resize the VirtualBox window and we'll see the Debian guest respond and resize accordingly. The guest editions also enabled shared clipboard and shared folders, among other things. Now, you should have a virtual machine with the guest editions and disk encryption if you chose to use it. You have the full power of Linux in a portable virtual machine now. I recommend taking a snapshot of your fresh install so you can always revert back to a pristine system. Again, I recommend you read through the VirtualBox user manual that you can get from their downloads page. It will explain how to do lots of things like run in headless mode, use the command line tool to manage and control everything, use remote desktop, screen record, and more. If you have any questions, please ask in the comments and also subscribe if you're not already.